BART safety, it's been at the forefront of the news in recent weeks. And joining us this morning is BART Director Bevan Dufty, who represents San Francisco on the board. BART is a collection. It spreads through four counties. It has 47, 48 stations and 121 miles of track. It goes from San Francisco, Daly City, Antioch. It takes on in a lot of different cities, a lot of different attitudes. But one thing that seems to be cutting across the board is increased concern about crime and comfort, as in safety on the trains. What is BART going to be doing going forward? You have extra patrols out now, but that's not going to last forever. What's next? Well, for me and some of the other directors, we want to emulate what Muni has done for over 20 years, which is the MTAP program. They have trained young adults, 25 to 35 year olds that ride the system or visible in the station. For me, the, the most important thing is that our riders on evenings and weekends, and you know that's when we're losing ridership, the daytime ridership coming to work and back is staying strong. But I think what we need is a visible presence on the trains and in the stations and that people know that, that they have someone to turn to and that it's not just a situation where they're on their own. How many do you see in this program? Are we talking about some sort of uh, widespread use of, of, of these sort of safety officers or ambassadors or your sort of token out there like these increased patrols where the odds of actually seeing them on a train or something like that are pretty slim when you have a system to spread out. Well, I appreciate that BART police have been working six days a week and, you know, the numbers are there. And I think Chief Rojas is committed to having more patrol presence and within the resources that we have. But we're down 25 officers out of 177. Right. It's going to take some time, as you've seen around the Bay Area. It's difficult recruiting officers right now because of competition with other jobs and, and housing costs. But but I think for me, I want to see a very visible presence. I think we should have a large cadre. And, and you've seen with the elevator attendants. I mean, the, next to opening the Adion extension, the biggest thing I get compliments about is that we have attendants the entire time at two stations that people can get on an elevator and be safe. And I think that's the model I'm looking for. Okay. There's also the question of behavior on BART. Uh, people aren't necessarily comfortable. They're packed in. You have your officers, let's say, that are out there. But for most of the time, you know, they're not... You're not seeing. You don't these, see this. These are sort of made this is, for TV Right. Shots. This okay. is not what you see every day. I okay. agree with you. All right. Now, one of the questions in there is people's behavior. It may not raise to the level of violent crime. It, it, it usually doesn't. But we see panhandlers, let's say. It's one thing if you're panhandling on a street, but when you're coming up and down a car or you come in and you do a break dance routine and then start going up to people, some people feel like contributing. Other people feel like they're getting shaken down. Right. That's absolutely true. But I think that... But what, BART won't move... You, the board is split... At best about the idea of banning panhandling. Well, I think the board is split and I think the community is split. We had many people reach out to me and say, hey, I don't think these dancers are a bad thing. They're very respectful and they're good. Yes, I see that they're, you know, women with children often that are going through right. and that's a problem that I've dealt with and the news has reported on the fact that this is kind of more of a setup than, than for real, a family needing help. Um, so I would say to you, I think that there's a lot to do before we get to this point in the junction. I just, I'm not ready to go down that road because I I think it's going to divert us from actually getting some things done. In other words, we will wind up having a debate about the philosophy behind public safety rather than dealing with public safety? I think so. I think I'd rather do things that are that are meaningful. We're about to start uh, homeless outreach out in Contra Costa. I think that you know our agency is stepping forward, and we need the partnership of the city. You've seen down at Civic Center where the San Francisco Police Department is working with uh, BART PD, and that that didn't exist before. And we really need the help of other law enforcement jurisdictions in the Bay Area to help us make our system safe because it's the life's blood of, of the Bay Area. How people or move people around. Just start offering to take someplace else. Yeah. And that seems to be happening as well. We're going to come back next time, and we're going to talk about housing in BART. It's becoming a very touchy issue, especially in the suburbs. Should BART build housing on its parking lots? Bevan, stick around, okay? I'll a bill that would fast-track new housing near BART stations is moving forward in Sacramento. The proposal by San Francisco Assemblyman David Chu would require the transit agency to establish new zoning standards on BART-owned lands that are mostly used for parking lots at the moment. A lawmaker has decided late last week to send it to the Senate floor for debate. Phil Mateer has more.
It's one of the biggest issues in the Bay Area, and it's a hot one as well. Housing. Everybody wants to see more, but they don't necessarily want to see it in their neighborhood. Joining us this morning is Bevan Dufty, BART director who represents San Francisco. We're going to be talking about, about a current law making its way through the state legislature that would allow BART to build housing, multi-story housing, on top of its parking lots without much input from the locals on this. A lot of people are upset about that. I, I guess so, and as you know, BART is on a watch and wait situation as a formal position for the board, but for me, at Balboa Park Station, we are developing on an unused lot, working with the city and county of San Francisco, 100 units of housing uh, for families, and I think that that's really important, so this is a helpful tool, I think. Possibly. Possibly. But in San Francisco, it's one place. Yes. But Lafayette, Orinda, uh, even Concord, North Concord, they're talking about bigger developments, and they're talking about Questions about, you know, uh, out there they have this land for, for housing up in the Concord Naval Weapons Station, but they're also talking about the BART station right here. Boom, putting in development there as well. Is there too much? I think that's something that we will work on. I think that we have a transit-oriented development policy. We're, we would have a mix of market and affordable housing. And I think the reality is that, that we can't continue to sprawl. I mean, the distances that people are traveling to work, it makes sense to have housing close to a station. And the way people get to stations in the next 10 to 20 years may change. 10, 12 years ago, we'd never been talking about Okay, we're Denver. looking at this East Bay. This I think this is either Concord or Pleasant Hill, where they have the development going Pleasant in, and they're going to to have more going in. That's, yes. that's Pleasant Hill. MacArthur, there's a huge development. Now, yes. the question is also the parking lots. People use those parking lots to get on BART. What's the future of that? Everybody wants to have a bus-only system, but you and I know that that doesn't necessarily work. People want to drive to BART. No, absolutely. But this is a law that doesn't say within the next year or two years. I think it's giving BART an opportunity to be part of the solution to the lack of housing in the Bay Area. So I think that David Chu and Assemblymember Grayson are, are, are thoughtful. I understand that there are going to be a number of amendments that are being presented when it's on uh, the Senate floor this week. And I think going forward, it's something that, that BART should be involved in. BART's also getting into the office office space business because some of these developments are going to include office space because and the idea can. is may you should be able to uh, BART to work as well. Yes. So some uh, at least one BART director, Deborah Allen from the East Bay is raising the question of BART's a transit agency. You guys are supposed to be moving people. Is getting into development going to be a distraction? Is well, it a distraction? When you look at the 50s and 60s, I mean, decisions were made to give us access to rights of way on the freeway and to give us land, and that's why we have as robust a system as we do. Now, 60 years later, we have the opportunity to look and say, okay, can we be a good neighbor and can we respond to the need for housing? Can we make vital communities around our stations? I think that's something that does contribute to safety and the vitality of neighborhoods. And I think in Balboa Park, what you see going in there is going to be, a, it, the community is very excited about it. And, and so I recognize the suburbs are different than the city, but hopefully we can do a good job in, in, in trying to address some of these problems. It's going to be interesting because the people went to the suburbs to get away from this, and now <laughs> people are saying, well, no, you have to have it as well. And they're not too happy about that. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, that seems to be the, the motto <laughs> of the Bay Area. All right, Bevan Dupty, I want to thank you for joining us this thank morning, you, uh, taking a little time on the hot seat.